Hello, in this video we'll continue with our corporate distribution discussion and we'll look at a problem that continues with the four steps. Step one, focusing on the tax consequences to the corporation distributing property. Step two, adjusting the current EMP for the year. Step three, looking at the consequences of the shareholder. And finally, step four, adjusting the accumulated earnings and profits for the corporation so we can roll that over to next year. If you have not yet watched the previous corporate distributions problems, please do that, including the checklist video, because it's very important to understand the basic rules. This one assumes that you've gone through the previous problems. So this is problem six, so please see the previous problems. So in this problem, Peachtree Corporation has no accumulated or current earnings and profits through December 31st of the current year. On December 31st, Peachtree distributes to Grape, its sole shareholder, a parcel of land with a basis of $90,000 and a fair market value of $190,000 subject to a mortgage of $140,000, which Grape is going to assume. Now, Grape's basis in the stock of Peachtree Corporation is $50,000. Okay, so looking at this problem, the first thing that we want to notice is that in the previous problems, we dealt with corporations distributing cash. Here now, Grape is receiving a parcel of land that has a liability on it, it's subject to a mortgage. It's subject to a mortgage which Grape is going to assume. Grape assumes that mortgage. So that's extremely important to understand this problem. So anytime we have a distribution, remember distribution in the tax law is not the same definition as a dividend. A distribution might be a dividend, but it also might not, depending on the facts and circumstances. So anytime we have a distribution, whether it's a cash or property distribution, we have four steps to consider. The first step, step one, is to look at the tax consequences of the corporation. Now, when it comes to the tax consequences of the corporation, whenever there's a cash distribution, step one is not going to have any consequences. However, when there's a property distribution like we have here, which property other than cash distribution like land, we're going to take the amount realized minus the adjusted basis of that piece of property and that gain but never loss must be recognized. So you're wondering, okay, well, you might have seen my previous videos where we talk about the amount realized is the actual cash received plus constructive cash received plus fair market value of non-cash property received minus liability, minus, sorry, selling expenses. Well, here, Peachtree Corporation is distributing property and there's nothing to do with any of those items. So you're asking, well, what exactly is the amount realized? Well, Section 311 of the Internal Revenue Code basically states that the amount realized here is going to be the fair market value of that property. So here, the fair market value of the land at the date of distribution is $190,000. So we use $190,000 as the amount realized minus the adjusted basis of the property at the date of distribution, which here is 90,000. So we subtract away the adjusted basis of 90,000. And this gives us a gain, a realized and recognized gain by the corporation of $100,000. So on Peachtree Corporation's 1120, $100,000 gain must be recognized. Now, if this was a loss here, the loss would be realized but not recognized. Section 311 says that gains must be recognized, but losses never can be recognized. Okay? Losses can never be recognized in this situation. So we've just done step one. Peachtree Corporation has a $100,000 gain that must be recognized on the Form 1120. Now, I want to note that the reason why in the previous corporate distributions problem videos, problems videos, where step one, we didn't have any consequences because when you're distributing cash, the cash uh, fair market value or the face value is equal to an amount. The base is al also equals the same amount and therefore the gain will equal zero. So that's why step one never had consequences there. Okay, so now we go to step two. Once we've determined step one, 
Step two is to adjust the current EMP for the year by step one. By step one. Okay. So here, the current EMP given to us in the problem is actually zero. We're told in the first line that Peachtree Corporation has no accumulated or current earnings and profits through December 31st, the current year. So current EMP will be zero. What we do is we add this gain to current earnings and profits. So we add this $100,000 gain that we've just recorded because remember, this goes on the tax return to give us our step two adjusted current EMP of $100,000. And we're going to be using that EMP for steps three and four. That's why we do this in order, right? So that was step two. Let's make that a little bit more, that line a little bit more. Um, linear there. So that is how we calculate the current um, EMP as a result of step two to use for purposes of step three and four. Now I want to note something. You might be wondering, okay, well, why exactly are we doing this? Again, the corporation is going to have to report this $100,000 gain on the form 1120. And remember, the whole idea of earnings and profits is you're looking at financial accounting. And you're right, the financial accounting idea. So that's going to increase the current EMP given to us as a result of the end of the year. But remember, we're also adjusting for this economic gain. So that's going to increase earnings and profits for the year, current earnings and profits for the year. Now you might be wondering, but don't gains also create a tax amount? And you're right, they do. Now we're going to assume, we're not going to worry about the tax consequences in this problem, but really in, in, in practice, you would have to net the amounts, the gain of the taxes they create. So if the corporate tax rate is 21% on this gain, you would actually have... Um, a $21,000 tax effect. So you'd actually have a $79,000 adjustment, 100,000 minus 21,000, a 79,000 adjustment to current earnings, current earnings and profits. Now I'm not going to adjust for that to make it more simple. So you understand exactly how this rolls over. So you see how it works. So we're pretty much going to ignore tax consequences, but in, ta in practice, you would have to adjust the net effect of the tax. Okay, so now we've done step one and two. Again, we have a gain here. And by the way, this gain, the character of this gain is going to be whatever the land is. So this land looks like it's business land. And if it's held for more than a year, it's going to be section 1231 gain, just so you know. Then the current earnings and profits is adjusted by 100000 So now we have to worry about step three and four. So step three, following along of our checklist, step three is we look at the consequences to the shareholder. So the shareholder here is grape. That's why I use the purple color because the grape. So the shareholder consequences, okay? And remember when we do the shareholder consequences, we always follow the three part waterfall. First, we're gonna look at the um, dividend to the extent of earnings and profits. Second, Anything beyond that is considered return of capital to the extent of basis, which the basis here is given as 50000 And finally, third, we're going to have a capital gain distribution for the rest. Now, before we determine that three-part waterfall, we have to determine the amount of the distribution. So the, distri the distribution equals the amount of cash received plus the fair market value of any non-cash property received minus any liabilities assumed. So here, is Grape receiving any actual cash? No. Grape receives a parcel of land. So we do have liability, I'm sorry, we do have fair market value of non-cash property. That's the 190,000, I'll just put 190K. But that land is subject to $140,000 liability. So we subtract that away. Remember, we subtract away liabilities. We subtract away liabilities. So 190,000 fair market value minus 140,000 liability amount that's on that gives us a distribution amount of $50,000. Okay, that $50,000 distribution amount, we're going to go ahead and apply our waterfall. So the first stop on the waterfall is dividend. It's a dividend to the extent of total EMP. 
And remember, we did our uh, problems one through five in the past. And in those problems, what we focused on, we looked at, we, we focused on the um, whether it was, it was positive current EMP, uh, negative current EMP, positive accumulated EMP, negative um, accumulated EMP. So here we have no accumulated EMP. So that makes it that part easy. Current EMP was zero at the beginning of the problem. But look at this. We use this $100,000 current EMP. Again, we would have to adjust for tax. But for to show you how everything flows in this problem, we're going to ignore tax for this problem. So this 100000 EMP goes here. Again, that's why we do this in order the steps. So we have total EMP as a result or as of step three of 100000 So the 50000 distribution is all dividend because we have enough EMP to cover that. So that means that step two, our return of capital, as, as I call it, the ROC, return of capital, right, which isn't taxable, is zero. And finally, step three, our capital gain distribution, our capital gain distribution is also going to be zero, is also going to be zero. So that gives us the consequences of the shareholder, we have a $50,000 dividend, and that's how it's going to be taxed. Goes in the form 1099 DIV in that sense, reported as a $50,000 dividend. Another thing that when you look at the shareholder consequences, remember, Grape is receiving land here. So the question is, what is the basis that Grape takes in that land? And remember, the rule is under Section 301D, that it's always going to be equal to the fair market value. So the fair market value here is 190000 So that is going to be the adjusted basis of the land that Grape takes by Grape. The 190000 the adjusted basis of the land in Grape's hands. So we've done, just determined the how the $50,000 distribution is taxed as a dividend. And we also determine the basis of the land going forward to grape. So we have one more step, and that's step four. Step four is to adjust accumulated EMP for next year because we need to roll that over so we know, hey, what's our accumulated EMP for next year when we do the same analysis? Remember, our formula for adjusting accumulated EMP is we start with the Accumulate EMP given to us in the problem. We add current EMP given to us in the problem. We, I'm sorry, we add or subtract, whether it's positive or negative. Okay. We also take into account step two, gain, if any. And then we have the distribution adjustment. The distribution adjustment. And finally, we summarize that amount. Let's make that a little bit more linear there. Sorry. We finalize that amount and we get our adjusted accumulated EMP at the end of the year to use at the beginning of next year. So that's our beginning EMP for the next year. So the accumulated EMP given to us in the problem is zero. Current EMP also is zero. Step two, we have $100,000. Again, we're ignoring the tax consequences um, of that amount, okay? Because again, I want to show you how everything flows. So that rolls over there as well. So see how step two impacts the problem. If you really do this out of order, you'll get a different consequence. Because if, for example, in step three, if we didn't, if we did step three before we did step two, we would have zero EMP and then it would go to return of capital, reduce the basis down. By the way, the basis remains to be $50,000. So the basis would be reduced down right to zero and then we'd have all return of capital if we didn't have any EMP from this step two. So see how the ordering really does work or makes a difference? It's very important to understand that. Again, the basis here after step three is still $50,000 in the stock. And our distribution adjustment. Remember the general rule for distribution adjustment is whatever in step three is a dividend will be the distribution adjustment and that will be subtracted. So this step two is added. This distribution adjustment will be subtracted. So we subtract away the amount of the distribution 
that's treated as a dividend. So that gives us a cumulated EMP next year of $50,000. And that finalizes the question. So to summarize, remember in step one, Peachtree Corporation has a $100,000 gain that goes on Form 1120. The character of that gain would be whatever the asset is here, the land. Let's say it's business land and it's been held for more than a year. So it'd be Section 1231 um, hundred thousand dollar gain that goes on the uh, peach tree corporations form 1120 step two we then adjust the current EMP here is zero by the hundred thousand dollar gain again in practice you would have to net out the the uh, tax consequences which if there's a 21 percent corporate tax rate would be a twenty one thousand dollar tax consequence so that gives us a hundred thousand dollar adjusted current earnings and profits again we're going to assume for this problem that we're not going to adjust for tax we roll that over to step three. In step three, we go ahead and do our normal shareholder consequences, the three-part waterfall. First, we determine the distribution. We have a $50,000 distribution amount because it's 190000 fair market value land minus the $140,000 liability. That gives us a $50,000 distribution. We go through the three-part waterfall. Boom. All that's dividend because we have $100,000 of EMP. Zero accumulated plus 100000 of a current EMP. 50,000 all dividend, no return of capital, capital gain distribution zero. The basis of the land that Grape takes is $190,000. The basis in the stock in Peachtree Corporation that Grape has is still $50,000. Finally, we get to step four. We adjust the accumulated EMP for the beginning of next year. So accumulated EMP and current EMP were given to us in the problem as zero. We then adjust for step two, which is $100,000. We subtract away the portion of the distribution that's treated as a dividend, which is $50,000, and that gives us our accumulated EMP for next year, $50,000. See how this four-step checklist really does help? Once you got this checklist down, boom, this is easy, right? It makes things so much more manageable. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out future videos on corporate distributions or other topics.